Hi there. This is a, uh, an Asus uh, PA32U uh, monitor. It's a 30, 32 inch uh, monitor, I think aimed at the domestic uh, gaming and, and publishing market, and, uh, you know, for desktop publishers and things like that. Uh, I've seen this monitor uh, at the, the end half of last year, September 2018. I was given it by the manufacturer to look at. And what I discovered at the time was, although it could hit 1,000 candelas per meter squared in its HDR mode, it only supported HDR10, and uh, of, of the two standard dynamic range uh, color uh, gamut, gamuts it supported, it could do uh, sRGB and Adobe RGB. So sRGB is very close to, to in fact, it's almost the same as Rec. 709, the television um, uh, display uh, gamut. Um, and I thought it had some potential. I think it's about £1,700 to buy. So it's an expensive domestic monitor, uh, but very cheap uh, as a broadcast monitor. And I had it, thought it had some mileage. And so uh, we, we, we borrowed it and, and, and I ran it through some tests and discovered that although at Rec. 709, well, sRGB as the preset was called, it was kind of usable. Um, with only HDR10, it wasn't really usable as a production HDR monitor. Um, you really need HLG uh, if you're doing BBC or really any sort of television work and you really need something like Dolby uh, Vision, you know, supporting the Dolby PQ curve um, if you're doing any kind of uh, uh, DCI type work. Um, now, I've got, I'm under no illusions that as a, as a £1,700 monitor, it's half the price of the nearest competitor, the ISO uh, CG319X, which I really like, which is a single um, uh, uh, IPS layer. Um, but again, can do, um, but can't do uh, a thousand candelas per meter squared. Can only get up to about three hundred. Uh, but supports those 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 gammas for, for HDR workflows. Uh, and then you get up to the sort of more expensive than twenty thousand pounds with the ISO um, uh, CG three one four five and the Sony uh, BVM X three hundred and the BVM X three ten, the new model uh, launched recently. Um, so this is not a replacement for any of those expensive monitors. This potentially has some use as a, a, a monitor on operators' desks in QC areas, maybe. Uh, so first up, I'm going to see how well it does at Rec. 709, because that's the basic requirement of any television type monitor. Um, so my test setup is this. I've got um, Lightspace CMS running on this laptop here. I've got a Klein K10A Pro. It's the probe I use for most things. And I've got, got test material I'm playing back off this little Blackmagic Hyperdeck, feeding this Fuji IS Mini um, over SDI, which is then feeding the monitor over HDMI. The monitor is, of course, HDMI and DisplayPort. It doesn't support SDI. Uh, you wouldn't expect it to. Um, uh, but um, at the moment, um, I've got a null cube loaded into the into the IS Mini, so that the IS Mini is not behaving as a LUT at all. It's just it's just passing the data, and uh, and I'm going to take a look at, uh, at how well it behaves. So I have uh, uh, zeroed the monitor. I've, I've recalled factory state, and I've um, uh, and I've got it set to Rec. 709 input, and uh, just got some test material. But I mean, first glance, it looks okay. I'm in a very bright room, and I can't I can't dim things, unfortunately. But I can measure the colour response of the monitor, and I can uh, start sort of setting it up uh, for those kind of things. So initially, I'm going to um, I'm going to take a look at some simpty colour bars because there's a couple of useful things we can see on there, and. Uh, my first observation is that the blacks are quite sat up. I can, I can see the sub-black there, uh, which I shouldn't be able to see. Um, and it looks a bit more saturated than I'd expect, although without a blue check mode on the monitor, I can't tell for sure. Um, I don't have perfect color memory, um, not many people do, and so I rely on the probe for, for all these kind of measurements. Um, so anyway, well, let's proceed. The, for broadcast use, at a, about 100 candelas per meter squared, um, and uh, a D65 white point. That's, that's kind of what really Rec. 709 talks about. And even looking at the course view on, on Chromasurf, I can see that it's a lot bluer than it should be and about twice as bright as it should be. The probe is measuring 206 nits. Um, so, you know, that's fine for domestic use. That's fine for watching movies or, or playing computer games, but that doesn't cut the mustard in, in broadcast terms. So there we go, I've, I've zoomed in on the, um, the CIE color space there, and in case the camera's not showing it, um, my measured point is down here, you know, a couple of delta E's away from where it should be um, at the, uh, the proper white point of a broadcast monitor. And you can see there's the, 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 the black body locus, which ironically this measurement is on the black body locus, uh, but it's a bit too blue. And so we're, we're measuring a white point of about 7,500 Kelvin, not the 6,500 Kelvin that we really would expect to be in 
the middle there. So uh, I'll, I'll now attempt to, um, to sort of make some adjustments to get that a bit close to what I'd expect. So I'm going to bring the, um, the ironically, they, they, they call it the brightness of the monitor, how hard they drive the monitor, um, which in broadcast terms is always the black level of the monitor, but uh, um, you know, this is what they call it. So as I wind that down, you can see my overall illumination levels coming down to something approaching what we'd like to see on a broadcast monitor. So there, there I go, there I'm at about 100 candelas. That's great, and that's waned quite a long way off the default point. So I think the default point on the monitor was, was 50, and I'm down at 18. But at least now this is the kind of illumination that a broadcast monitor would expect. Um, and we're still very blue, so let's see if I can go and sort that out a bit. Um, as ever, this is a monitor with sort of hunt and peck buttons. But uh, in advanced settings, we've got some control over the gain and offset of each of the colour channels. So if I take the blue down, you can see my display here. Oh, yeah, I overshot it. So I can bring it in perfectly. Look at that. The, the, the probe is measuring uh, you know, 0.313 and 0.329 on the XY. It's ex exactly where we want it to be. 6507 Kelvins, which, you know, the very strict definition of the white point is 6504 Kelvin. So there we go. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at a... Um, uh, a very dark grey patch, and uh, uh, and this is two percent above uh, black, and uh, you can see that the probe, well, you can't see, but the probe is having some difficulty. It's having to average to make some readings, but that's okay. But I might go back to a five percent patch just to take some dark measurements, and it's pretty close. Look at that, um, not bad at all. I probably wouldn't even adjust that. Um, that's that's almost exactly where you want it. So, but it did seem that this monitor had the potential to be, you know, the REC 709 preset to be exactly correct. But out of the box, like ever, with most monitors, it was too blue and it was too bright, too illuminant, and the, the black level was too set up. So um, that's kind of interesting. So I'm back now with Lightspace running on the laptop, and you can see that I've got um, a test chart uh, playing up onto the monitor. Um, remember the, the, the Fuji IS Mini uh, LUT box is in the way of the signal path, uh, but it currently has a null cube loaded into it, so it's not doing anything to the signal. So I'm in the display characterization menu of Lightspace, and because display characterization can take a long time, I'm just going to go for a nine point cube characterization. Uh, make sure my probe has got the correct profile loaded into it. If you know about the problems that tristimulus probes have with metamerism for different display types, you know that you have to have a probe like a Klein that can take um, profiles loaded into the head to, to, to offset their inherent metameristic failure. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to characterize a nine point uh, profile. So that's nine times nine times nine points. So that's what, 81 times nine. So that's what, about 700 odd points. And each point will take about a second to read. So once this is going, I will speed it up. It's very boring watching 700 seconds worth of, of color patches flash up onto a monitor. Uh, enter a name. What we call this? Asus Test Gen 11th Rec 709. Okay, press OK to start. So now that uh, Lightspace is reading from the client and it's controlling the IS Mini using the IS Mini as a patch generator, and it's going to start um, just ramping through colors. And you can see those colors being read back and displayed on the CIE chart. Um, and, um, and that will give us a, uh, a profile of how the monitor copes. And if we then use Lightspace to, to build a LUT to conform to Rec 709, it will tell us how close the monitor's color space is to Rec 709. Uh, and, and that's very useful. We, we hope it's 100%, um, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. So we're done with the um, 
with the display characterization it took 10 minutes and in truth if I was doing this for a proper broadcast customer I would, it would have been at least a 17 point characterization which gives rise to what we call a 17 cube LUT. Uh, some customers like 21 cube LUTs now but 17 times 17 times 17 is, is a big number about 5,000 seconds and even with a fast probe like my Klein K10A um, that's more than two hours uh, and, and, and so profiling for LUTs can take a long time. But here we go, uh, light space is finished. It says display characterization started at 10.20, completed uh, zero to 10 minutes, blah, blah, blah. So um, if, we, if, we, if we close this and go to tools and color space and uh, we manage color space and look, there's the one we just pulled there, um, ASUS test, 11th uh, of, of January, Rex 709, and we display that color space, we can see that essentially um, uh, uh, light space has driven the patch generator to the extremes of the color triangle and read, has read what's come back. So it looks like, uh, for the most part, this monitor is displaying colors you know, further out than Rec. 709 uh, really wants it to, but that's fine. You know, if we were in a very color critical environment now, we would make a LUT uh, based on that. And, uh, and we would conform this monitor to Rec. 709 perfectly, and there's the, the 1976 version of that chart. You can see that down in the blues, it's kind of gone adrift there, down in the blues, that um, uh, uh, it wasn't able seemingly to reach the extent of the blue primary, even though it could get further into a um, uh, uh, you know, non-primary version of blue. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, and uh, let's have a look at some of these other things. Um, RGB separation, that's interesting, that as the idealised grayscale goes up towards white, um, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the colours, which essentially give rise to saturation, fall off. Um, and uh, uh, lots of, sort of other interesting things like delta E measurements. Um, but the, 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 the next thing we want to really look at is, is what, how that turns into a, a, a LUT. So if we go to color space and we convert the color space that we've just derived from the monitor and our target wants to be, sorry, our source color space wants to be Rec. 709. That's what we're conforming to. And our destination color space is the monitor. So we want, we want to make the monitor look like a, uh, a Rec. 709 monitor. So there's the, the profile we've just derived. And we do create new. And after it waits a while, spinny, spinny blue beach ball. Um, light space will tell us how. To, so, okay, color space conversion reports 99% 99, 99 within target gamut. And I bet the problem is in that blue end, very near the blue primary, was where it was, was struggling. So, let's now go and view that as, as a cube, because that's quite a nice way of, of, of to own look. Um, so, what you're seeing here, all the dots you're seeing here are the Rec. 709 numbers. The numbers that were sent down the cable to the monitor that, you know, that, that, that Lightspace generated to the patch generator. And the cube is what was measured back as the uh, um, ability of the monitor, where, 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 the, where the colors laid as they were displayed on the monitor. And ideally, you'd want all the Rec. 709 dots to be within the cube. But what we're seeing here is that at the blue end, you know, right near the blue primary, the dots are all clustered up and, and they actually hit the, the end uh, of, of what the monitor is capable of. And that, 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 you know, that was what we saw in the, in the 1976 colour chart, the fact that it can't quite get out to the blue primary. 99% is, is, is fine. I mean, this is not a grading monitor. You couldn't sit a colourist in front of this because they'd see that. Colourists are very good at spotting um, where monitors aren't displaying very saturated colours well. So that's kind of interesting. So now that I've kind of got this LUT built within Lightspace, if I load that into the Fuji, we can see what effect that has on the, on the display. So I've got um, IS Mini selected as the, the LUT device. I deselect null cube, because I'm not using the, the IS Mini as a patch generator anymore. I'm using it as a, as a LUT and I hit upload and, uh, and that uploads it to the, to, to, the, to the IS Mini, which is now behaving as a, um, a LUT box. We can see the, um, the output of the LUT box um, uh, and I'm feeding obviously the input to the LUT box with the output of the Hyperdeck which has just got the BBC HD version of, uh, of uh, test card F on it um, and so the LUT is now being applied 
So now this monitor is as close to Rec 709 as it's you know as as we're capable of. It's 99% Rec 709, but the colours are all now as a lot more correct than they were sort of as the box. So if I just press the toggle button on the um, the IS Mini, you can see some changes to the display. So that's without the LUT applied and with the LUT applied. It may not be coming across well on camera, uh, but to the eye it is, and it's in the blue end of the spectrum. It's, it's, it's in that blue part of the, uh, the colour space that the monitor wasn't dealing very well, that the, that the LUT is having to work hard to try and bring the monitor into Rec 709. So this is some footage I'm very familiar with. This is ISO's uh, Dolby PQ showreel, and uh, I, I, I watch this an awful lot. And so to make sense of this, because it, it has been encoded with, with the PQ curve, for HDR. To make sense of this, I have to put the monitor into uh, a PQ uh, mode. And so if I can find that, that's kind of up here in an HDR menu. And you can see we've got HDR Asus, don't know what that means. HDR UHD Premium, don't know what that means. But these are the two ones that are important to us. HDR PQ 1000, so that is the PQ curve going to 1000 candelas per meter squared, which is essentially the HDR standard used by all um, film and sort of Netflix type uh, HDR production, and HDR HLG, Hybrid Log Gamma, which is the BBC, well it's really the television standard for, for, for HDR, it's, the, it's what's termed the um, scene referred, although that's a, that's a clumsy expression, I prefer to use the term uh, dimensionless video, uh, but it's, it's, it's and, and, and so you then get a choice, oh, I've put it into that mode now, which I don't want to do. So uh, let's go back to uh, that menu, and that was up and up, and down to HDR, so I'm now going to put that into PQ mode. There we go. So now this footage should look correct as mastered. And because the monitor can uh, get to a thousand candelas, uh, this is, you know, kind of a useful test. So um, you can see the sun rising. This is not looking correct. So this is all material that's been shot to show off the HDRness of, of, of a high-end monitor. Um, and uh, uh, I, I don't know how well this is coming across on camera. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's impossible to say, but uh, this does not look too bad to me. Uh, I'm used to seeing this material on, on, on expensive monitors and, uh, and expensive projectors, and this is not coming across too bad. You know, this is definitely, uh, you know, usable for, um, for, 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 you know, review and approval and operators and things like that. I could not put this monitor in front of a colorist, uh, but it's not bad at all. Um, I'm trying to find, wait until it gets some really challenging uh, stuff. So this here is my big beef with this monitor. Now I want to move the camera uh, to, to, to look at the bit that I'm having problems with. So this uh, text, um, you, you can see, and it, and it really is you know, visible to the eye as well, you know, the, the sort of blooming around the text um, uh, on, a, on, 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 you know, on a proper HDR monitor, um, you shouldn't be seeing that, and on an ISO, and on a, a Sony X300, you wouldn't. You'd be seeing black and white. You wouldn't be seeing black with a lot of uh, grayscale dimming going on around it. And um, I don't know whether that's down to internal reflections within the panel or whether it's down to um, uh, you know, not enough uh, zones of dimming on the, on the LCD backlight, on the LED backlight. Um, but uh, I could not put this in front of a colorist and not expect them to, to kick off and, and make a lot of fuss about, about that. Um, but, you know, it, this is a £1,700 monitor, it's not a, a £32,000 monitor like a Sony X300 is. Um, so uh, that may well be, we could regard this as a, a grade two um, HDR uh, a broadcast stroke film monitor, you know, strictly for sort of operator positions and, and for just sort of like content and, and, and that kind of monitoring. 
So this is um, a BBC show reel. Um, it's the BBC Blue Planet uh, show reel. So this is material that's of course been encoded in HLG, so the monitor's in the wrong mode at the moment. It looks ridiculous. Um, so if I go down to the HDR menu and go in there and select HLG, and I've got um, uh, a, a choice of some values of HLG, mastering at different um, uh, maximum luminance values. Because unlike uh, Dolby PQ, Dolby Vision, uh, HLG is what's referred to, is, is not a display referred standard. It doesn't refer to absolute values. It refers to, um, well, they call it scene referred, but that's, as I say, a clumsy expression. Um, you should really think about HLG as being uh, more like. Um, uh, dimensionless video, like Rec 709. Uh, you know, the, the numbers in the SDI stream don't have anything to say about um, the actual light output that's expected to be coming out of the face of the monitor. Um, and it's just horses for courses. You know, that's more appropriate perhaps to television production and film production. So, uh, um, as I say, this is a, a, another test uh, reel I'm very familiar with. And this is not looking too bad. I suspect this monitor is doing some noise coring because these shots that we're seeing now, and you won't be able to see it on camera, these shots are, are noisy uh, when viewed on a very high-end monitor. And in fact, if you look at the documentation that comes with this demo reel, um, uh, you know, whoever at the BBC produced it says you know, that, that there's noise in some of these shots. Um, and I'm not seeing that on this monitor. So again, maybe limiting its ability to be used as a QC device for HLG. But the pictures look good, and you could definitely use it as a, as a content monitor. This stuff is all shot at 25p, um, and the motion rendition seems okay for 25p. The, the, the previous things we were looking at were shot at uh, 24p, and I've also got the ARRI um, uh, demo reel, which is shot at 23.98, or, or post-produced at 23.98 frames per second. And motion looks exactly as I'd expect on all of those. So I've spun forward a little bit in the, in the BBC HLG showreel here, and you can see that there's a very bright specular highlight top right of the display. And I've got light space measuring that. So if I, if, I, if I put my probe on that top right um, section of the display, light space is measuring 432 candelas per meter squared via the probe. Uh, so that's you know, more than four times brighter than broadcast white. And, uh, you know, you think, well, that's a, if you look at these pictures, they, that looks like a very rich, bright part of the picture, but it's still got an awful lot, long way to go, given that most, HL, most high dynamic range television is mastered at 1,000 candelas, peak white. This is a great um, show reel. Um, if you get the chance to watch the, um, uh, the Blue Planet 2 um, UHD DVD, uh, UHD Blu-ray, mastered um, to 1,000 candelas on a, on a telly that can handle it, um, it is fantastic looking footage and this is, this is where HDR really brings TV alive. Whereas increased resolution, increased colour space for me leaves me kind of cold. Um, uh, it really is high dynamic range uh, that brings um, you know, high end television to life. Um, so I look forward to uh, you know, iPlayer doing a lot more of this kind of thing. So I've left the monitor still in its HDR mode and I've got a peak white um, patch up on the monitor which again the camera has just irised down so that you can't tell. But to me, this is very bright. It's like, you know, having a very bright light turned on and shone at you. Um, and if, in fact, if I, if I, if I just take the camera and we see if we can get a, a good look at what um, the probe is reading there, so that's actually more than a thousand candelas. The, the probe is reading eleven thousand uh, eleven hundred ninety-three candelas per meter squared. So this monitor is is more than capable of doing those very very peak brights that are required uh, for HDR work. Okay, I've got the, uh, the probe now um, characterising the display in this HDR mode, um, so uh, it's unlikely that it's going to report a better colour performance out at P3 or out at Rec 2020, because it can't quite make Rec 709. Um, but the thing I have noticed while it's doing this automated test, and I'm running this on a 20 point, so this will take a while to do, is uh, that at very low levels, I'm seeing an awful lot of that blooming that um, what I, on a CRT I would have described as internal reflection artefacts, um, which I think is a function of this monitor, just not having enough uh, dimming zones. So it's very obvious there on that very dark grey patch and there um, that the, uh, the, 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 the grey to, to black um, performance is poor, uh, much like that text that we saw on the, the ISO showreel. Um, that there was a lot of uh, haloing effects around hard transitions where it goes from dark to bright luminance. Uh, and that's, we're seeing that on the test patterns as well, on the test patches that we're seeing at the moment. So, um, 
yeah, in conclusion, I don't think I could recommend this monitor as anything other than a kind of grade two um, operator's monitor where it can be used as a uh, just kind of review and picture content monitor. While Lightspace is driving this thing to make the, the full set of measurements for, for the, um, the high dynamic range uh, uh, mode that it's in at the moment, I'm just going to throw up on screen uh, a few of those um, uh, results derived from the, the, the reports that Lightspace gives so you can get a real feel for, for, for what the colour space looks like um, when, when tested you know, to the standard of REC 709 or, or P3 or REC 2020, the colour spaces we use in television. And, and whether a, a kind of a high-end graphic design stroke gaming monitor is suitable for that. And I think in some respects it is, but in lots of respects it isn't. Um, but hey, at 1,700 quid, you can't, you can't argue. It's half the price of, of the nearest ISO and, uh, you know, one fifteenth of the price of, of a, uh, a proper HDR mastering monitor. Um, so uh, that's quite an easy sell, I suppose.